end of September up here in the vegetable garden up the hill. Uh, you can see there's a, a carpet of pumpkin underneath me and some beans growing around the edge of the vegetable garden. So there's actually only four pumpkin plants in this area. Um, all the rest of the soil around is mulched so we've used a combination of some um, recycled weed membrane, some rainmeal wood chips and grass clippings. So um, other than the pits where we've planted the pumpkins and the beans and uh, just this little patch of sweet corn, everything else is just mulched out. So um, the pumpkins are planted in these pits 60 centimetres uh, by 60 centimetres deep. Um, and that's so that we can just cultivate that small amount and put plenty of, of manure into that pit and then it means we can just mulch the rest of the ground out and as you can see um, the pumpkins just cover everything. Round the edges we've also got the beans planted in pits so this is our um, land race of runner beans that we're developing so there's lots of different varieties of beans growing together and then we save all the seed, mix those up um, and sow those again next year. So that's round the outside and we put them round the outside edge so that they um, aren't shading out the rest of the garden. So um, these are on the north side and the ones over here, um, the sun goes down behind the hill before these really cause any shade. So they're round the outside to prevent any shade. And we're growing the beans are up um, some towers, some wire towers, and they're made of stock fencing. Uh, and it's just a really simple cheap way to grow the beans upwards. Um, so you might have heard of the the three sisters combination so a sort of traditional polyculture not in this country unfortunately um, particularly in the north of England here it's just not a combination that would work. You can see the sweet corn here this is the kind of short um, varieties that we can grow in the north uh, and then when you look at them compared to the height of the beans there's just no way that these sweet corn could support these beans you know the beans are very fast growing the variety of cor sweet corn that you can grow here um, is not at all vigorous so it just wouldn't work but we've still managed to use the same concept of um, the beans growing upwards and using the vertical space and the squash using all the, the, the ground around it um, so it, it still works as a concept, but, um, but just not using the sweet corn as the uprights. I just wanted to show you um, some of our pumpkins. The, this one here has taken advantage of this frame here. We did have some beans growing up here, but a rabbit got in and, and decimated those. So this uh, empty frame here, this pumpkin's just grown up. So our pumpkins that we've bred ourselves, we did some... Um, deliberate crosses a few years ago we used um, Carol Deppie's sweet meat and also Crown Prince and Burgess Buttercup so we did some deliberate crosses then uh, and then since then we've just been um, growing them out here open pollinated um, so they're just uh, crossing naturally and you see there's quite a bit of variation so there's this one here which is quite dark green um, it's got this um, eye here which is quite uh, typical of the Burgess Buttercup and then uh, down here you can see this one's quite a, a sort of um, squashed one that's quite a nice attractive one and then hiding under here there are many more all different shapes and sizes um, just showing a little bit of variation and we're, we're really pleased with our pumpkins this year um, when we bred these ones what we were looking for were um, we wanted ones that grew well on this site so we trialled um, up to a hundred different varieties over a few years and, and assessed them all for growing on our north facing slope in, in Yorkshire. Uh, so we had ones that had to be quite tough, um, had to ripen early um, and uh, we also were looking for disease resistance but also flavour so that's really important was the flavour and we particularly like the ones that are Sort of quite dry chestnutty flavoured fruit. Um, also we wanted ones that weren't so big that you know it's just too much to handle every meal and um, we didn't want them too small um, either so we've you know we've got a nice variety now of all different shapes and sizes but um, you know they all have good storing qualities as well so when we pick these which will be in the next week or so um, We'll then uh, cure them, so we store them inside um, about room temperature for about a month 
and that really helps them just to um, cure and develop the flavour so that when we cook them and eat them, sort of probably around November time, um, the, the flavour will be really delicious. And then we have some, some racks, just like um, you'd have for apples, and we put them on the racks and store them somewhere cool and uh, they'll keep for at least 10 months, but we've, uh, we find we've usually eaten them all by uh, about 10 months time. Uh, but each time we cook one, um, which we usually do roasting, we will eat whatever we can, you know, because they're quite a, big, quite a big fruit. So we'll eat whatever we can. And then the other ones we will slice up, um, whatever's left we'll slice up and roast and then we'll freeze that so it means every time we want to make say a soup or a stew or something like that we can get it out of the freezer and then um, even after we run out of fresh pumpkins that we've been storing we've got all the the pumpkin in the freezer as well that we can use for the rest of the year so um, you know these these varieties that store for a long time that's a really important quality for us um, you know if, if we have a a lot of pumpkins we don't want to have to eat them all in the next couple of months um, otherwise they'll go rotten so that's a, a really important quality for us as well so yeah really pleased with this year's crop quite amazed with our crop this year we're really really pleased I mean we thought there were quite a few but until we've actually cut the foliage back and got them all out here um, yeah we're really really pleased particularly as it hasn't been a fantastic year this year uh, you can see um, they're, they're all even though they've all come from the same crossings that we did years ago um, you can see that they're all there's quite a bit of variation here we did actually discover when we were cutting back that there were five plants up here not four but even so it's pretty impressive it's really nice to see all the different characteristics of the different plants so this one here has these ridges on that's like the sweet meat um, and then the dark green like the burgess buttercup and some of the paler smooth ones like the crown prince and um, many of them have got the eye on just like the burgess buttercup some with just a small eye and some with a bigger eye just depending on uh, on uh, you know how they've taken the different characteristics but um you know the flavor of these uh, will all be fantastic i'm sure and what we'll do when we harvest the seed is um, in the past when we've been doing our breeding programs you know we've sort of saved the seed of an individual pumpkin given that exact fruit batch of, of seed from that fruit a name whereas with these now we're just going to harvest all the seed and mix them all together uh, and it'll just be our own um, you know hybrid mix of seeds so that they'll just all go together in in one you know container and then we'll grow them uh, you know next year the uh, over there we've got the urine and um, so when we've planted these in the pits as I say there's only five pits here that we've put the pumpkins in so we dug the pit um, put the well-rotted uh, manure and, and leaf mold and compost in and then we poured one five litre um, container of urine into that hole and then about we a week later we put the planted the plant so it gives that lots of nutrients in and, and the great thing about urine you know if you've got time have a look it's a really fantastic um, balanced fertilizer so you can use fresh urine water it down in a watering can about 10 parts water to one part urine and you can feed all sorts of plants all year round and um, so it's a really fantastic cheap way to to feed your plants and just thought i'd show you this here as well um quite a few of the pumpkins where we put down this leaf mold as a mulch and see here all the the roots of the plants so quite a few of the pumpkins had rooted 
uh, along their stem as they sent out their long stems. And so you can imagine that along the way they're also managing then to get more water and nutrients as they put roots down. I've also got some stems here. So you can see at different points along the stems they've put these roots down as well. So that's, that's the benefit of having something like a leaf mould or um, the, you know, the composting grass as opposed to just purely using the weed membrane which um, you know, doesn't give it anything to, to root into uh, and feed itself. And then finally we've got these fruits, so these are the immature ones, they're not ripe yet. We had to harvest now because we've been forecast frost this weekend and we're going away tomorrow for a weekend so we just didn't dare let the fruit get frosted then we wouldn't be able to store them. So we've harvested them now and these ones we will dehydrate and then we, we crush the dehydrated bits of pumpkin up into a powder and then we use them to like a thickener for soups and stews so we can use those all winter long so nothing gets wasted. So you know ideally um, with pumpkins you'd let the leaves die down completely, let all the goodness from the leaves, all the energy go back into the fruits but unfortunately where we are you know you've got a short growing season um, and we just end up having to harvest them depending on when the frost is rather than the leaves dying back so they do look really lovely and green and lush and you might think why are we harvesting them now when there's obviously a lot more energy still left in the plants but for us it's always the frost that's the limiting factor. As we've been harvesting the pumpkins we've thrown the, the pile of leaves and stems over here and uh, nothing will get wasted, this will get composted and up here we're actually going to do in situ composting where the potatoes were, um, where we've just harvested the potatoes and um, we're going to give the potato area a rest this year, we want to get rid of a lot of the volunteer potatoes so we'll be roguing out any potatoes that come up. So that area is just going to have a rest. So we're going to do in situ composting um, just by piling all of this over there um, and then we're adding on some cut grass as well. So that'll just all rot down over the next year uh, and then that'll be fantastic for growing next year. <laughs>